Hello everybody. Today's knife is the third knife that I bought from Mazarin, a company from Maniago in Italy. Uh, Maniago is a big traditional knife making city, um, home to brands such as Fox Cutlery, Lion Steel, Antonini Knives, Falcon Knives. Um, the Mazarin company has been around since I think about 1960 and they produce their knives in this big shed. And they work on these benches. And they look like this. Now, the first knife I had from Mazarin was the Atti. Quite expensive for me, about £80. But extremely well made, lovely design, top quality materials, well worth every penny. That inspired me to try one from the budget end. So I bought the Marinera, which I think was about £13. Very simple, very basic, but a lovely everyday pocket knife. Spurred on by that, I bought another one from the budget range and that's what we're going to have a look at today. Okay, so here we have the Mazarin um, Colt Tasker Large. This is how it comes from the retailer, Heine Haynes. Um, in a bag. I thought it was a bit disappointing. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to come in a box but the other budget knife I have from this company did come in quite a nice cardboard box with a little leaflet. So I'm not sure, I suspect it probably should have had a box. Um, Heine Haynes is one of the main retailers for people based in the UK in terms of the range of knives they carry. But it's not the first time that I've had a knife from them that wasn't exactly what was described. So if we get into this, have a look at the specs and then I'll uh, explain a bit about what that means. So we've got a basic <coughs> traditional style um, slip joint. Construction is um, brass liners, bubinga scales, riveted construction, one blade with a clip point. Now, on the Heine Haynes website, the photograph that they carry shows the knife as having brass bolsters and a brushed finish matte blade. And as you can see quite clearly, I hope, um, this has nickel silver bolsters and a mirror finish blade, or a mirror finish with my big paw marks on. So, Let's get some specs and some context. This is the Victorinox Spartan copy for size comparison. So this is quite a big knife. We get the ruler. We've got a blade length of tip to the start of the handle of 85 millimeters, which is Just over three and a half inches, three and five eighths, I'd say, and that gives us a cutting edge then of about seventy seven millimeters, 
which is about just on th three inches or just over three inches. The knife weighs, let's see, two ounces near enough, 2.01 ounces. Fifty seven grams dead. So the ergonomics a nice um, smooth curved handle. The handle profile is flat and from the front bolsters it flares out gently and gradually to a slightly wider rear. Um, all the edges are nicely smooth rounded off but there's no contouring as such. Plenty of room for a four finger grip nice and comfortable in the hand. Fit and finish is quite good for a knife of this price £13 thereabouts. Um, most of the edges and the surfaces join quite well. That rivet there is a little, that pin there is a little bit scruffy compared to the way the others are finished. But there's nothing major, given the, that this is a, <coughs> a budget knife, until you get to the blade. Now, on the blade we've got <coughs> uh, rust fry stamped onto the tang, and then on the um, flat of the blade we've got some rather fancy laser etching. The steel is only advertised by the retailer as just being stainless steel. And when you look at it closely, particularly under a hand lens, it has a very odd orange peel texture. The edge bevel is tiny and it doesn't in fact on one side manage to get all the way to the point. And I use the term point quite loosely because it is a bit rounded. It's not particularly pointy at all. So, let's have a look at the cutting edge. As you can see, the cutting edge is rubbish. I don't know if you can hear that tearing, but you, I think you should be able to see the way that's just, if it bites the paper, it's only to rip through it. Just for comparison, this is a very cheap Spartan copy that I've sharpened. That's the sort of edge I want. But this, it's just not happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the video here, do a quick time travel jump and I'll come back to you after I've had a go at putting an edge on it.
Right, so we've got an edge. But fundamentally, it should have come with an edge, and it didn't. And that's very disappointing. It's particularly disappointing because I was very fond of my Mazarins. I had them down as a top quality company. And two of my three knives are top quality products within their price bracket. Maybe this one just slipped through, didn't get checked. If it had come with an edge, I'd have been recommending this quite strongly now. As a result, I'm not entirely sure. It's a nice knife, nice knife for the money. But I shouldn't have had to sharpen it myself. I think I'll have to leave you to make your own mind up on that one. Thanks for watching.